recently made a video about how Baldur's Gate 3 was the perfect introduction to D&D for D&D beginners. If you've always been curious about the world's most famous tabletop role-playing game but weren't sure where to begin with it, Baldur's Gate 3, an RPG built on and around the Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition rule set, is a great place to learn a lot of the intricacies of classes, gameplay, combat and what's possible in the world. But in this video, let's take it a bit further. What are some Dungeons & Dragons beginner's tips for playing Baldur's Gate 3? And how might they help you improve your D&D game in the real world? Playing D&D is a hugely creative exercise. It helps you think outside the box, problem solve, work collaboratively, and we're not just talking during combat, but in navigating the world around your party too. Let's get into it. Together. So first up, rolling your character. It is stressful. The sheer choice of races and classes and subclasses and backgrounds and traits is so overwhelming when you first start the game. But just like when you're creating a character for a D&D campaign with friends, remember, there is no wrong way to choose here. If something catches your eye, if something sounds like it'll be fun for you, pick it. Don't stress about getting it wrong or making a bad call, because you can't. If it's your first time stepping into this world, avoid the temptation to Google and try not to pay too close attention to raw stats. The perfect build that lets you unlock every scenario and win everything, it doesn't exist. The drive to strategically create a character designed to win while trying to account and plan for as many weaknesses as possible, also known as min-maxing, it's understandable we all like to feel capable and in control, but all it'll really do in the long run is stress you out. When you play a D&D campaign with your friends, the goal is not to win. The goal is telling a good story together. So. Try and do the same here and you'll end up having a much better time. Don't think of it as something that you win or lose at. Think of it as a story that you're telling. And in that way, there's no perfect way to do things. There's just your way. The squirrel lunges at your foot and bites it. And on a similar note, sometimes the best and most interesting moments in a D&D session happen because of things not going according to plan. The dice always know that sometimes the best stories are a result of role failures or something happening that you did not see coming. When that inevitably comes to pass in your playthrough of Baldur's Gate 3, commit to your choices and give in to the chaos a little bit. Don't reload a save the second the path deviates from what you want, because you might be surprised by where things go. This is where the fun of truly role-playing, sticking to the choices your character would make, rather than the choices you, the player, would make, really comes to the fore too. If you aren't trying to win all the time, you're instead just going on instinct and you're just letting yourself be taken along for the ride, you'll enjoy whatever consequences are brought upon you all the more because you know at least it's truthful. But look, all that said, it is your game. Play however you want. If you do think you'll replay lots of different paths though, one word of warning, save your game. Save all the time. There are autosaves here, but they are not that frequent and seriously, encounters can go sideways so quickly or social interactions might not pan out the way you wanted to at any moment. So having multiple saves is always nice to go back to and have a redo if that's what you enjoy. Get into a habit of saving. You can do so manually by going into the pause menu or quick save and quick load by pressing F5 and F8 respectively. In a session of D&D, the more you put into a game, the more you will get out of it. When a DM describes the world around you, they're inviting you to interact with it. Use the skills you have as an individual and as a party and see the world react to your presence within it. That's the magic of D&D. It's a world you've created together where what you do directly influences everyone and everything. In Baldur's Gate 3, it's the same deal. Although you can just pass through places on your way to somewhere else, you can just take the most direct route to achieving your goals, and you can just treat it as any other game where the fastest way to win is to fight anything or anyone that stands in your path. 
that's not how things have to go here. Taking your time to explore will reward you in a lot of different ways. The environment is there to be played with, the NPCs are there to talk to, and there are scenarios that will be available only because of the specific character you've created. So don't just go straight to the main mission, take your time. Search every corner, try different approaches, talk to everyone. This isn't the type of game you want to sprint through. And also, like in a D&D campaign, spells aren't just for combat and in fact, their most interesting applications are probably outside of it. Read their descriptions and think about how they might be used. Any character in your party that can cast speak with animals should definitely try to chat with that rat or squirrel, for example. Or maybe Featherfall can help a party member get out of a trap without taking damage. Or maybe Charm Person will mean you can avoid a nasty fight. As any D&D player will tell you, thinking outside of the box with the spells and abilities you have doesn't just make you feel really clever when it works. This is where the real fun happens. So, combat. D&D combat can be a little bit overwhelming when you first get into it because you can sometimes be unsure of what's available to you at any given moment. But here's where Baldur's Gate 3 can actually help you with a lot of your tabletop strategy. Because your movement, all your actions, bonus actions and reactions are all neatly laid out in front of you. Take all the time to get comfortable with all of it as getting comfortable with the ins and outs of action economy is key to becoming a more confident D&D player. You want to give yourself as many actions as possible while slowing down your enemies as much as you can. So first up, listen to and absorb the tutorials, as they are there to help you. Then, when entering combat, spread your party out as much as you can, keeping track of cover, high ground and difficult terrain. Crowd control goes both ways, so spreading your party out will help you avoid being hit by area of effect attacks, while keeping an eye on terrain will always grant you an advantage over enemies, either with literal advantage on attack rolls or movement advantage by dodging difficult terrain, which halves the distance a character can move in one go. Remember to also give one last thought to your positioning before committing to an action, as it is always entirely possible to damage or even kill your own party members with big spells. You can also use the jump or disengage bonus action to escape from melee range without provoking opportunity attacks, which give enemies a free attack on your turn when you willfully move out of their range. There will almost certainly come a time that you need to use a spell to attack or heal and you find that your character is out of spell slots. So make sure you have a party that has a good range of cantrips. Cantrips being spells that do not use up any spell slots and thus are generally free to use. You can cast them every turn if you want to. They can be very useful for dealing damage, healing or controlling the battlefield, so make sure you're familiar with what ones you have. But additionally, when your available spell slots are getting thin, remember that you can use the world around you and action-wise, it is much cheaper to do so. Shove someone off a cliff, spray them with poison or a fire trap or water, some of the most memorable kills you'll do are environmental. An extra word on healing. A healing word, if you will. Healing is a much more expensive thing to do in D&D than in your average video game, because spell slots are in such short supply. This is the same in Baldur's Gate 3. As an action, it is just more limited than what you might be used to. But then again, a character, whether friend or foe, works just the same whether they're at full health or they have one point of health left. So you kind of really want to hold back on healing for as long as you can. When you do decide to heal, make healing word your first go-to. As a bonus action spell, it might not give back as much HP as Cure Wounds will, but with a 60-foot range, you'll have an easier time getting it to land where you need it to, and given it's a bonus action, you can heal and not lose the ability to attack on your turn. Action economy. It's important. One extra tip. As D&D players will tell you, characters don't instantly die when they hit zero hit points they first fall unconscious, and then roll what's called death saves on their next turn. 
Three successful saves and they revive, and three failed death saves, they die. At which point you better hope you have the revivify spell or scroll handy. But if at any time between them falling unconscious and them rolling three death saves the character is healed, they will be stabilized and can continue fighting. This is why it's okay to hold out for a while before you decide to heal your characters, even if they've already been knocked to zero HP. It's risky, but hey, that's dandy. Bear in mind too, this isn't the kind of RPG party makeup where you have a tank, a couple of DPS, and a healer. Barbarians, fighters, and paladins are big melee classes, yes, but they aren't really about taking all of the attention and damage while everyone else spams spells from afar. While you might want to go into every battle with the plan of pelting everything with fire, frost, and thunder, you need to remember that spell slots are extremely limited, and a couple of big attacks at the top of a battle might not be enough to limp the entire party over the finish line multiple rounds of combat later. As any D&D player will tell you, combat is a marathon, not a sprint. One single crowd control spell might do way more to weaken foes up to getting hit by your barbarian instead. Try not to see each move as a means of doing damage all by itself. Instead, look at the bigger picture and see what you can do to disrupt and stop enemies rolling to attack. That may serve you much better in the long run. Now, one thing I find myself doing during early access with Baldur's Gate 3 was prolonging a long rest because I was worried about missing an event or moving the story on too much. So I'm here to tell you, take those long rests. You won't be penalized for doing so. You'll be able to get to know your party members way better by unlocking additional dialogue options at camps. You'll also get to see everyone in their camp clothes, but that's a chat for another time. And most importantly, your spell slots are topped up so that you have full use of everyone's abilities. Trust me, you don't want something interesting to happen, like an opportunity to talk to an animal, and you can't take that opportunity because you've already burned through all of your slots. A bit of self-care goes a long way. Now we could do loads more tips on Baldur's Gate 3, but we should probably save some for a later video, so final thoughts. Definitely don't stress yourself out trying to be a completionist because it is literally impossible to see everything the game has to offer in a single run. Trying to do just that is a recipe for getting overwhelmed and stressing yourself out. You can play however you want, but do not expect to create a character that lets you do everything, either right away or in endgame. And if it's your first time, maybe don't hurl yourself headfirst into multiclassing. Classes are classes for a reason, and a jack of all trades, as they say, is a master of none. Choose a class that you like and lean into what they're good at. If something speaks to you later on down the line, spec into it by all means, but please take your time. There's no optimum path, only the one that sounds most enjoyable to you. And a human fighter is just as valid a character as a dragonborn sorcerer. Sometimes they're even better for simply learning the ropes before re-rolling something a bit spicier later. Finally, that incredibly wild, maybe stupid idea that you just thought of, try it. D&D is all about, if you can imagine it, it just might be possible, and Baldur's Gate 3 seems like it really captures that spirit, so give it a go and magical things might just happen. And hey, even if you fail, you'll almost certainly have a really good story to tell. If you enjoyed these tips, we will have lots more Baldur's Gate 3 and D&D content on the channel very soon, so subscribe to make sure you don't miss out. We're off to gather our party before venturing forth, so we will see you in the Forgotten Realms. Thanks for watching. Bye!